Hello to the ratepayers of the Gundawindi Regional Council. This budget is what Council regards as a no frills, back to basics budget. Unfortunately, with all of the increases of this budget, Council still delivers a deficit budget. Don't for one minute believe that amalgamation and the state government restrictions have not come without a serious cost. You certainly don't need me to tell you about the difficulties surrounding everyone following on from the economic crisis that has hit the world either. This was evident in the recent state budget, and just like the state, local government faces extreme challenges. This year, the Gundawindi Regional Council needs to recoup a higher revenue of 9.2% compared to last year to meet its commitments. One thing that is painfully obviously when consulting ratepayers is that they do not wish to see a fall in service deliveries. To do this, Council needs to recoup the same amount of revenue as last year plus any increased costs that may occur. This increase will not mean everyone's rates will rise by 9.2%, as valuations play an integral part in deciding your final rates paid. There will be variances in all categories with winners and losers in each category, especially the rural rates as Council implements an entirely new method of regional rating. Council faced a number of challenges in preparing this rating system as the value of water is taken off the UCV of each water licence property. The removal of water creates huge differences to the final rates tally. Furthermore, with the enforced amalgamation, Council has a limited period to implement a universal rating system for the new Gundawindi Regional Council. The urban rates were merged last year, but unfortunately the timing of the amalgamation did not leave enough time to deliver an equitable rural rating system. As it turns out, with the water values coming off properties this year, it is probably not such a bad thing, except for those that were situated on adjoining boundaries. The new Gundawindi Regional Council rating system will consist of 47 categories, of which 19 are rural. No longer will there be any boundaries, but rather a system that will see properties grouped into size and valuation bandings. This will mean that properties of similar sizes and similar valuations will all pay the same cents in the dollar, irrespective of where that property is situated. We believe this is the fairest way to assess properties in the vast Gundawindi Regional Council area. This will mean increases to some ratepayers, whilst others will realise decreases in some areas as the water component is removed. But basically, similar properties across the region will be paying the same level. The ratepayers most affected percentage-wise will be those rural properties that are currently on the minimum rate. Council believes that a minimum rate of $500 is no longer viable in a time where construction and maintenance costs are at an all-time high. An extra level has also been included in the urban rates which will deliver a three-tier urban rating system based upon valuations. The good news for urban rate payers is that Council has been able to restrict the increase in utility charges to a conservative 7%. The water charges of 91 cents for Gundawindi residents, $1.10 for Texas residents and $1.20 for the Inglewood residents are more than favourable compared to other councils that are facing massive water implications. Common question asked is why are there three different rates for centres and the answer is simple. These are the costs incurred in providing water to respective centres where economy of scale comes into play. Furthermore, the supply charges for Inglewood are significantly higher than the supply charges for other centres. In what can only be described as a bare bone budget, Council has been fortunate to secure some funding that will allow for a number of projects to proceed. Council's application for funding for the Inglewood Pool was successful and it is proposed that the Council will borrow the balance of these funds to ease the burden of this already hefty budget. Other major projects include road network maintenance of 7.6 million, skate park 88,000 which includes 53,500 for funding, the Inglewood Swimming Pool 2.2 million which includes 1.1 million of funding and bikeways across the region of 567,000 which includes $255,000 of funding and the Torwood Streetscaping of 90,000. You may ask why the need to increase rates so much but the answer is clear when you look at the increasing cost of living and the reality of the state budget is fully realised. Removal of the fuel subsidy and abolishment of subsidies have an enormous effect on our region. Council has just completed the initial EBA which included the equalisation of wages for the three former council workforces, a dollar increase of $326,000 or equates to 4% rate rise. The recent removal of the fuel levy is another major cost increase of $120,000 and equates to 1.5% of the rate rise. The roads and drainage grant received from the state government for many years now, which amounted to $237,000, has been taken away overnight and equates to a 3% rate rise. 
The economic downturn has also hit council with interest rates plummeting and realising a decrease in the income of 500000 Local governments simply cannot absorb these costs. These are but a few of the hurdles that the council has had to overcome in this budget. However, we cannot stand still and just allow these hurdles to stifle such a great district. The Gundawindi Regional Council has taken this case to the Minister for Local Government and will continue to lobby for a fair go through our amalgamation costs and extreme circumstances. We are also looking to work collaboratively with adjoining councils in an endeavour to reduce the costs for all concerned. The Gundawindi Regional Council recently met with the Moree Plain Shire Council in a first for cross-border council relationships. Council is aware of the extent of this budget and can assure ratepayers that no stone has been left unturned to minimise the effects of this budget. However, when you receive advice of a grant abolishment five days before your budget is to be announced, Council is left with no alternative than to deliver a budget like this one. On behalf of the Gundawindi Regional Council, I trust that a prospect of a bumper season continues for all concerned.